For the replacement of the stator, we are going to need a bolt box to keep our bolts in order, red thread lock, oil resistant gasket maker, and a quarter inch ratchet with assorted attachments including a 5mm Allen socket for the case cover. We also have a Wavetech multimeter to measure the resistance of the exciter coil, a new 200 watt stator, electrical tape, wire cutters, and some heat shrink to tidy up the job. It is optional to have the multimeter for this job, but it helps when determining whether the stator may be the cause of your bike not running. To measure the resistance, find the red and black wire coming from the stator and disconnect. Go ahead and hook the positive end up to the red and black wire and the negative end to a ground. You'll want to set the meter to ohms to check the resistance. Currently, we have an electrosport stator in this XR and we should be getting over 100 ohms. The bike was not starting, so this may be an indication that the stator has lost its ability to supply a spark. It's always a good idea to mark the wires on the old stator so when installing a new stator you can reference back to see how you had it set up. Once you get everything detached, pull the wiring down through the clips. A flathead screwdriver makes this task easy. Next, remove the two bolts holding on the sprocket cover. Now, loosen the bolts for the clutch cable in order to separate it from the left engine case cover. You may have to loosen both sides to free the cable completely. Pay attention to your setting if you want to have the same clutch slack when reinstalling. Next, remove all the stator cover bolts. Loosen in a crisscross pattern to relieve the pressure from the bolts evenly. Once you get the bolts out, make sure you have your washers and use the bolt box to stay organized. The only thing holding the stator cover on is the magnetic force and maybe the old gasket a bit. We have the bike leaned over about 20 to 30 degrees so that no oil will come out when removing the stator cover, and we did not drain the oil before this procedure. Time to get those stator bolts out and also remove the clip that holds the stator wiring in place. When installing the new stator, apply some red thread lock to each bolt. Remember that thread lock takes about 24 hours to cure completely. Tightening the bolts in will take a few rounds as the stator pushes down and fits further into the stator cover. Next, install the clip while making sure not to pinch the stator wires. Now apply oil resistant gasket maker to the grommet to ensure no oil leakage and get it on all sides of the rubber. If the gasket to the left case cover needs replacing, go ahead and install that now. While reinstalling the cover, it is helpful to hold the wiring back so that the grommet doesn't slip out. The magnets will pull the stator cover on, so be aware. Now it's time to bolt back up the cover using a crisscross pattern and get the clutch cable back in, allowing for some slack. Next goes on the sprocket cover, making sure not to pinch the wires, then route the wiring back the same way as when uninstalling. Here we have a 100 watt AC regulator. I will use 100 watts from the stator to power the lights on the XR. To ensure no unnecessary extra power flows through the system, I will hook the power wire from the stator, which is the white wire, to the Baja Design's blue wire that goes to the headlight, and to the AC regulator.
I will then hook the green wire from the stator to the other side of the AC regulator and go to a ground wire hooked onto the frame. Now that we have our new stator in, it's a good idea to check the resistance so that we have a base number to go off of next time we are diagnosing electrical issues. For this Ricky stator, we should have about 90 ohms. Looks good. Observe your wiring with the bike running for the first time. Then after that, cover with electrical tape before the first test ride.